Dame Edna Everidge there. That goes back to 1958 and she is singing of her love for Mooney Ponds and her desire to move to a more fashionable suburb, which in that particular case happened to be Hyatt. Dame Edna Everidge, of course, there is an Everidge Street in Mooney Ponds and we are doing the unofficial history of Mooney Ponds this afternoon. Now, one person who you know well, what you may not know, is that he lived in Mooney Ponds for about 10 years and that is Bill Shorten, former federal opposition leader. Bill Shorten, welcome to the program. Oh, thanks for having me. I should have lived in Mooney Ponds for 20 years. Oh, 20 but, years. Hey. Okay, that gives you even greater credibility because the first thing I was going to do was say, well, you left. <laughs> uh, only to go to Ascot Vale Travancore, which is one suburb across. But um, I, I love Mooney Ponds. In fact, I love the whole of Mooney Valley. But I, I, I wanted to contribute. You asked a question before the uh, musical interlude from the Dame. I've heard two theories about the name of Mooney Ponds. Um, one was that it was named by uh, an early pastoralist Donald Kennedy after his native valley in Inverness Shire, Scotland. But also, I'm aware that um, it uh, has an, I've also read that it has an indigenous um, connot- uh, relationship. But before European settlement, the Mooney Ponds Creek was the home of the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nation. And it's, um, I've also read that the creek takes its name from the indigenous inhabitants, Mooney Mooney, who, along with Tullamarina burnt down and escaped from the first Melbourne jail in 1838. So, yeah. So there are there are multiple theories, but but obviously, no one's quite settled on the final one. And there's another little uh, you know controversy around Mooney Ponds, and that's this Birkin Wills monument. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, what can you tell us about that, Bill Shorten? Well, Birkin Wills set off from Royal Park, uh, and there's a cairn there in Royal Park up towards the Parkville near the Melbourne University. But they, in their, as you know, the journey was ill-fated and they perished. But the very first night of their long climb to the Gulf of Carpentaria, they camped uh, at Queen's Park. They apparently um, made the four miles and stopped for the day. So that was the first resting spot of the expedition, which it led to the ill-fated uh, demise of them at the dig tree on Cooper's Creek. But do you think the monument's in the wrong spot? Because it's it's in, uh, as I understand it, it's on Mount Alexander Road, but in fact it's more likely that it was, they, they camped in Queen's Park near the water spot. Yeah, I would say that the monument is sufficiently close to the um, the water spot in Queen's Park as that it's a academic argument. <laughs> so you'd say they're having a bet each way, so it doesn't really matter. <laughs> Well, I think it's close enough. I mean, I mean, there's a fantastic history to Mooney Ponds. You know, I've mentioned the Indigenous history, but it was the main Mount Alexander Road was the main field to the Mount Alexander diggings. Now, Mount Alexander is now known as Castle Main. But what I loved is they uh, built a courthouse, but further up into Essendon near the Brickmakers Arms, the bush rangers used to lie in wait. Rob, the poor old gold diggers, they headed up to the gold diggings. I didn't know that. I also didn't know that Castle Main used to be called Mount Alexander. It's just um, a knowledge-rich conversation. (laughs) People might say that doesn't normally happen with politicians. Here we go, answering questions. Yeah, we just steer clear of politics. It's all good. Hey, tell me, what is so good about Mooney Ponds? The people. Um, It's multicultural. Um, It's um, welcoming. Um, I don't think it's particularly snobby. I think it's just... It's a great area for families. It's got uh, lots of... It's well served by public transport. It's got good shopping. It's got good schools. It's quite close to the city, but it's still, you know, it's seven kilometres from the GPO, but it's um, it's suburban, you know. I, I think it gives you... Uh, the, the house The house lots are, are good. You've got some beautiful architecture, so I think it's a very warm and welcoming area. As and I would say, is Essendon and Ascot Vale, and, and the, the, the whole area is... It is though really close though. Uh, you look at them, you know, sometimes I think of Mooney Ponds and I don't think of it as being so close to the city, but look at a map. It's right there. It's just, you know, it's right behind okay. the, the Royal Children's Hospital. We're spoiled for choice. You know, we, <laughs> if it takes us half an hour to get into the city by car, people are, you know, shirty. So we're well served. I mean, it's had a railway station at Mooney Ponds since 1860 although that was a private company, went broke. And so in 1864, the, the railway line shut, but the government took it over again and, 
1871. So it's um, it's got a great Anzac tradition. Um, there's a lot of history there. You know, yeah. no. we, a lot of the young men went off to the Great War. Many of them didn't come back, but uh, it's... It's, it's incredibly interesting. A lot of the streets are named after World War One and World War Two generals and battles, and uh, yep. it's just a lot of history. There is a lot of history. Bill Shorten, we are coming up to the news, but thank you for telling us about Mooney Ponds. We're going to continue the conversation uh, through the course of the afternoon with our unofficial history. Thanks for talking to us. Yes, yeah, super. Thank you. Bill Shorten, who lived in Mooney Ponds for about 20 years. He doesn't live there anymore, but he's gone just down the road.